This is End Screen Noise. I'm Colin Dixon, founder of End Screen Media, and I'm speaking with Eric Achtman, who is executive chairman of a new company called Vinova, and Guido Meadi, who is the CEO of that company. Now, this is a brand new company. They are just coming out of the closet, if you like, uh, uh, right today. Um, so, first of all, Guido, why don't you talk about what, what is Vinova? Why? Why is Vinova? Well, actually, w first of all, we are very excited because we are coming out of stealth after five years uh, of hard work uh, with a lot of partners. Actually, we're, we've been working in open innovation with 20 global institutions. So it's a very exciting moment uh, for us. And uh, why Vinova? Uh, for a very simple reason. Uh, media and video in particular are critical today. And uh, we fulfill the promise of video. We help... Uh, fulfilling it uh, and uh, 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 help to fulfill it. And we've been working with a lot of corporations to make that possible. Uh, Vinova is based on uh, Perseus. Perseus uh, is a technology that essentially redefines uh, the approach to compressing and encoding signals. Uh, and it's inspired by the principles underlying human vision. And uh, so it, it does things a little bit differently from what has been done before to the advantage of much better compression, lower latency, higher quality, making certain things possible with the current infrastructure. So, yeah. so when you say it's very different to the way it's been done before, before what we've really been focused on here is, is reducing redundancy, right? Yeah. So you're not doing that? Not really, because uh, the previous approaches were correctly, uh, as you said, that they were focused on reducing redundancy. Persis is focused on leveraging correlation, extracting correlation in the signal. The and same way the eye the works. The same way our eye works, in a hierarchical fashion also, uh, which, which actually offers a number of new advantages uh, that go beyond the just the pure compression. What this means is actually very exciting because essentially we are shifting the whole bitrate curve uh, towards the mass population, uh, allowing to transmit ultra HD at HD bitrates or below HD bitrates, HD at SD bitrates, and SD quality at sub-audio bitrates. So for instance... You, you said sub-audio bitrates, so we're talking about 128 kilobits per second? Yes, uh, you can actually do that, and the most important thing, you can do it uh, and decoding it uh, and encoding it with commercial off-the-shelf hardware and decoding it uh, with uh, current architectures, current uh, connected devices, uh, and, uh, and current infrastructure, essentially. Okay. Just to make it tangible, because you know words are words, but uh, I don't know if it shows there, this is an example of a live encoded uh, tennis match at a quality that uh, Excellent quality. <laughs> looks pretty good. And it's just, uh, in this case, it's HD quality at 300 kilobits. 300. 300 kilobits. That's, that's very, very low. Probably five times lower than we would have expected. Yeah. Eric, this has tremendous impact on the, the whole workflow, the whole distribution of video, right? Well, absolutely. I mean, if you if you want to look at it, Colin, from a perspective of what Guido was saying about shifting the whole curve towards the mass population, let's think of this for a second. Ultra HD at HD bit rates, what does that mean? It means for those of us who invested in a 4K TV, who will actually be able to receive the content that makes that a worthwhile experience. When we talk about HD at SD bit rates, what that practically means is that we'll all be able to watch the World Cup on our mobile phones, whether 4G, 3G, or even 2G. And then when we talk about SD at sub-audio bit rates, um, you know, we, we in a sense uh, have the luxury of discussing whether we have full HD or HD service at home, but about a third of the world's population can't get video at all and would be very, very happy if it could have SD quality video any place where it effectively can receive a phone call. So essentially, the ability to do SD at sub-audio bit rates is giving video to the rest of the world. So places like Africa, where there really isn't any physical infrastructure in lots of places in India, for example, but they do have mobile data infrastructure, 
they can now do video. Absolutely, and it's not only Africa. It's India, it's Africa, it's Indonesia. It's literally a third of the world. We're bringing video to the world. Yeah. Well, that's, that's uh, so I've heard many, many pitches for, for audio encoding and video encoding that promise extremely low bit rates, but one of the problems with many of those pitches I hear is that they require a different client. You just can't do it on today's clients. So that's the $64,000 question. Can you do it on today's clients? The simple answer is yes. Um, when we sat down with our partners five years ago to architect Perseus, they gave us very, very clear instructions. They say, please do the impossible, which is get us greater compression, greater quality, lower latency. But they also said, guys, please use existing workflows existing hardware, the existing ecosystem. And so in fact, we're able to deliver appliances, embedded software, the codec plugin into that ecosystem and work seamlessly. And does this all scale? It does. Uh, it's, we go a bit technical, but Persis is a massively parallel architecture and consequently it does scale. It does scale very well on current infrastructure. So it will support even more cloud-based services uh, or large infrastructures that can process, uh, stream, uh, and store large quantities of video and images. So unlike many new startups, when they announce they just announced technology, you've already hinted at some partners. Yeah. Can you tell us about some partners? Well, you know, we are not at liberty of disclosing all of them. As I mentioned, our uh, coalition and consortium of partners includes over 20 large global institutions. Uh, they include media uh, players. Uh, Sky, for instance, uh, uh, is about to release a number of products uh, publicly, services uh, with us. And they've been a very important partner in the past few years in order to... So that's to Sky in the UK? Sky in uh, Europe, all oh. across Europe, and also Tata Sky in India. Okay. We talked about the importance of developing markets. We are already working to deliver services uh, in, uh, in developing markets. Then also we have infrastructural partners that are extremely important uh, to deliver services, like Hitachi, for instance, to fulfill and deliver hardware infrastructure and support. Uh, we have... Infra uh, high-tech uh, companies like Broadcom, Intel, that are uh, supporting us to deliver at scale uh, the, the plugins today and in the future also the silicon IP modules uh, into chips. And, uh, and then we have other large partners that will be released uh, as, uh, as we go, including also other sectors. It's not just uh, media, as you can imagine, but we operate also in other sectors. Like, for instance, uh, we partnered with a very large aerospace uh, global corporation to deliver services that go into other sectors. Medical imaging is also another big focus uh, with products uh, that hopefully will be able to improve the lives of many individuals and, uh, and other uh, releases that will follow in the next few months. Clearly big impact on, on a lot of different places. Eric, tell me a little bit about the company. Tell me about Vinova. Where is it based? How many people are there? Tell me about tell so me. So Vinova is headquartered in London, uh, in Paddington Station, uh, very convenient from Heathrow to come and visit us. Um, we have a team of over 50 people and growing rapidly. We grew 400% last year. We're extremely excited about the way things have progressed. Um, the company's actually structured, uh, we've taken learnings from the VC industry uh, where we, we also have some experience and we actually structured the company with the understanding that this opportunity is huge. And so we structured VNOVA as an inclusive model in a sense that we have a pool of patents, we have a pool of IP that protects what we've done. And as we go into certain verticals, each one with its own sales cycle, its own DNA, its own approach, its own needs, we're able to set up separate vehicles, separate companies, separate enterprises, separate partnerships, working with specific partners to make sure that this technology, these products are brought into the industry and that these industries can benefit. So in a sense, this is a call to partners. Um, we have a global co uh, uh, coalition of 20, uh, 20 players, and we're always looking for more partners to take advantage of this. I mean, one of the, the big things about Perseus is if we look at the way encoding has evolved since the late 70s, we've come to the point where it had become incremental. The improvements had become incremental with great effort. And now essentially, like the time that we transitioned from the best propellers in the world 
to the jet engine. It's a new paradigm, and that new paradigm releases large amounts of value, which makes it possible for everybody to share and everybody to profit, everybody to win. Yeah. It's, it sounds very ex exciting, guys. Um, well, congratulations on the launch. Uh, it's very unusual to have a startup launch with such a great set of customers. I mean, it really proves your technology is real. So hopefully they'll see this video and they'll be reaching out to you soon to, uh, to partner. So congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you. Colin. Thank, Thank you, Colin. Uh, we, we, we love it and we would like to, to invite uh, partners to think about how to make the impossible possible or the possible more profitable, which is... <laughs> <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great tagline. <laughs> and with that, I think we'll leave it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Colin. This has been Colin Dixon with Screen Media.